The Republic of the Marshall Islands is an archipelago consisting of 29 atoll islands and five coral islands, located north of the equator and midway between Hawaii and Australia. Most of the Marshallese live in two urban centers, on Kwajalein Atoll and Majuro Atoll. The 16,000 people living in the other 27 atolls have a subsistence lifestyle. Here, the main activities are fishing, processing of copper from coconut palm, production of coconut oil, and small-scale farming. In recent decades, there has been a trend away from farming, and now most food is imported. And especially in the outer islands, diets contain very little fruits and vegetables. With few places higher than three meters above sea level, the residents of the Marshall Islands are especially vulnerable to climate change. Already sea level rise, saltwater inundation, rising temperatures and changes in rainfall are affecting people and their livelihoods. The 2016 El Nino drought lasted several months and despite careful conservation, islanders, especially in the outer atolls, faced severe hardships as well water turned brackish and water storage tanks emptied. Historically in the Marshall Islands, the northern atolls, those north of the 9 degrees latitude line, are more vulnerable to drought. Keeping this in mind, the Rennie project was designed to focus on food security in the more remote northern atolls, and especially in Ailuk, a rural environment, and in Santo, a semi-urban environment. The Rennie project focused on strengthening agricultural activities whilst also promoting health and wellness actions. The government of the Marshall Islands has established a network of agricultural extension agents in the outer atolls. This network is critical for the re-establishment of agriculture in these remote atolls. <laughs> With the help of the government of the Marshall Islands and local non-governmental organizations, regular training was provided over a two-year period to the agricultural extension agents in Ailuk, as well as to interested residents. Soils in Ailuk are sandy and low in nutrients, so learning how to make compost and construct compost bins was one of the first activities. Throughout the two years, hands-on training in the Marshallese language was provided by different trainers to the extension agents and the ILOOK community. The training covered many different areas, including ground preparation and container farming, seed selection, planting and care of seedlings. Simple guides were prepared to support the training. Different food crops were planted during the two-year period, including tomatoes, eggplants, Chinese cabbage, and beans. The hands-on approach helped everyone find out which crops worked well in the ILOOK environment. Women were assisted to start their own home gardens and were shown ways to preserve food for times of scarcity, such as during drought. And youth were also trained, and a competition for the best pumpkin was organized. Pests pose serious problems for the growth of crops and fruits in the atolls. Training was provided on using biocontrols to control these pests, 
For example, a parasitic wasp was released to control the papaya mealybug, and this was successful. Complementing the training activities, the community nursery was re-established to provide a central place in the island for agricultural activities. The original nursery had fallen into disrepair. This was rebuilt and has now become a central focus for agriculture on the island. It provides a place for seed preparation, growing of seedlings, training activities, cooking classes and making compost. New rainwater storage tanks have been installed to provide water for the nursery. The project recognized from the start that growing the crops and fruits is only the first step in helping people change their habits. The help of the Canvasback Wellness Center was sought to help the Iluk community understand the connections between good nutrition, which includes fruits and vegetables alongside other food groups, regular exercise and health and wellness. Over a 12-month period, three visits were made to Iluk by the Wellness Center, who together with the local dispensary staff conducted basic health checks of residents' blood pressure, blood sugar levels and weight. Information on healthy eating, exercise and wellness was shared separately with men's groups, women's groups and school children. Exercise classes were conducted that included walking and dancing and sometimes these activities were combined with cooking classes in the nursery. As the Rene project closes, it leaves behind a solid foundation for the people of Iluk to maintain healthy lifestyles by combining the garden to plate concept with regular exercise to enhance overall wellness. In this way, the community is better prepared for the next drought.